So in the next slides, I will be sharing some of the best practices that you can do to prevent losing your funds and also how to stay safe. So first, avoid interacting with random messages and links that you receive on your email, on Discord, on Telegram, on Twitter, and other socials. Don't, do, do not trust them, especially from accounts that you don't know. In Twitter, for example, you might get random notifications of mentions and tags with links, so avoid interacting with it. Then, beware of phishing links. So, fishers create fake websites that resemble wallets, for example, MetaMask or protocols like Uniswap, POAPs, and NFT marketplaces. They sometimes misspell or add characters in between or after the word in the link, so it might go unnoticed. So, always check the URLs before clicking anything in the website or before connecting your wallet. Also, never Enter information after clicking suspicious and malicious links from messages or emails. So when you are visiting a random or a new website, be careful, be careful on signing transactions. Again, be careful on clicking links. So in Discord, for example, users can mark down links like it would say opensea.io, but in actual, it is a wallet drainer website. So look out for that and avoid clicking any malicious links. Also, don't go to the websites of random tokens being sent to your wallet. So if you have noticed when you see the transaction history of your address in either scan or in polygon scan, you might notice those random tokens being sent to your address. So do not go to those websites that you find there. It is most likely a scam. Another preventive step that you can take is using advertisement blockers. It is encouraged to install ad blocker extensions in your browsers to avoid clicking on potential harmful ads in search engines like Google. And it is also suggested to use browsers that blocks ads like Brave. So I've been using Brave for um, a long time now, and um, I highly recommend it. So I have a question. Has anyone ever tried asking for help in a forum or in a Discord server and then got random messages after? Anyone? No? I know I have. So Me. yeah. Yeah. I have experienced this firsthand as well. So when we are asking for support in public spaces like forum or discord or on twitter we can expect that there will be random dms in and in some instances the scammers will impersonate someone and act like a customer support or a community member who will use your concern as a conversation starter so so always check the legitimacy of any website or the username of the accounts reaching out to you or the email provided so yeah, always look out for this. Another best practice to note is always verify official websites. It is recommended to avoid using Google to search for a website uh, because sometimes it leads to scam pages or phishing websites. So navigate directly to official websites before you enter any information or before signing any transaction. And you can do this by, for example, checking the official or verified X or Twitter accounts of that software or that protocol. Check also if there are a lot of followers and see if that Twitter account is being followed by the people that you know or the people that you also follow. And you can use the link that is found in their Twitter bio. But be careful of hacked Twitter accounts. Pay attention to um, your crypto Twitter feed if there's any announcement or announcement of hacks or warnings to not interact with certain Twitter accounts or any compromised protocols. Next, a very important rule in Web3, never give your private keys, sorry, never, yeah, sorry. never give your private keys and secret recovery phrase to anyone except to back it up. So to recall, your seed phrase, it is a phrase of words in a specific order that creates your entire wallet. 
So if someone has your seed phrase or your secret recovery phrase, they can access most, if not all, of your accounts in your wallet. And on the other hand, a private key is like a password that unlocks a specific account within your wallet. So if someone has your private key, they can access the one account if unlocked. So again, for both of this, never share your secret recovery phrase and private key to anyone. Another good tip to secure your wallet is to have your backups offline. So never store your seed phrase and private key on any application or device that is connected to the internet, like a Google Docs or Google Sheet, the Dropbox, your iCloud notes, or other cloud storage. Storing it offline by writing it down with pen and paper is the safest option. It is also recommended to make a lot of backups stored in different physical locations, like in your house, in your sister, in your best friend's house, because a backup is not useful if it is destroyed by fire or flood along with your computer. If possible, have your backups fireproof or waterproof. Another important step to take is giving someone you trust a copy of your backups. So if you end up in a coma, you will be glad that you gave a copy of your backups to someone that you trust. It can be your parent or your partner or a trusted friend or anyone that you could trust. So they don't need to know how to use it. They could reach out to one of your trusted Web3 colleagues or friends and say something like, if anything happens to me, talk to Griff and they will tell you how this works. Okay. Next preventive action that we could um, practice is being aware of blind signing. So figure out what the transaction is doing. If it makes you sign a weird function to call a suspicious um, address, don't sign it. So if the function call doesn't match with what you're doing, verify again. So an example for this is in the website, a button might say convert, but after the MetaMask pop-up appears, the actual function says transfer. So verify, don't sign that. Uh, or for example, it says claim, but it is actually gonna drain your wallet. So verify transactions before signing, especially in new websites or a, a website that you're interacting with for the first time. Also, another good thing to have is a cold wallet. So a cold wallet is a physical device that keeps your cryptocurrency completely offline. So many looks like a USB drive. It generates your private keys within the device itself and stores them there too. So examples of cold wallets is Ledger, Trezor, and KeepKey. So if you're holding large amounts of crypto, consider getting a cold or hardware wallet and avoid storing it in hot wallets like MetaMask for enhanced security. Also, never buy from third-party sellers, like e-commerce third-party resellers. It is highly recommended to order directly from the official stores. Also, another good practice would be using ZKBob. With ZKBob, the contents of your wallet and the amounts you spend and receive are completely private. So the wallet addresses won't have a direct trace if you're sending crypto. So if you plan to transfer funds to a different wallet, you can use ZKBob and you can send and receive USDC on Polygon or ETH and USDC on Optimism. And also when using dApps like Uniswap or OpenSea, you have to grant them permission to spend your tokens and NFTs. So this is called token appro approval. If you don't revoke these approvals, the DAP can spend your tokens forever, but you can take back control by revoking your approvals. So you can remove the permissions by using revoke cash. And also another best practice to observe is having different wallets for different purposes. So it's highly suggested that each wallet should have only one function. So 
like one wallet for receiving funds or payments, another wallet for collecting POAPs, a different wallet for donating, another wallet for voting on DAOs and claiming rewards. So this method reduces the risk of having your funds drained by a phishing attack when collecting POAPs or during a DAP hack. So as you can see here, it's also nice to label your wallet addresses for the purposes that it serves. Lastly, don't go too much on en encryption. I have heard that there are many people who have lost their funds in crypto by losing their passwords compared to their backups being stolen. So there's a risk in making really complicated passwords that you can guess later if you lose the copy of the password. So make sure that you would be able to access your funds if you use any encryption or passwords. And I'll pass it to Heather for the testimonials. Yeah, so these are um, examples of different contributors we've um, known or that are currently in our our galaxy that that have unfortunately um had their wallets drained through these these different uh um attacks so we can go to the next so um this is an example of a person storing their seed phrase on their computer and then having um a person or and then sp spyware being installed on their on their heart on on their hard drive and then this this spyware was able to scan for their seed phrase to their eth wallet so this is a prime example don't have your your seed your seed phrase or or private key like stored on on anything that is connected to the 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 internet so that includes the cloud that includes having a screenshot on your phone um if it's in a a note section or like a a word document like all of these are really unsafe methods the Safest one, as Freshell has said, is just write it down on a piece of paper and store it in a very, very safe place. And then this is an example of um of a person talking to a a an an account in purse impersonator, um, where they thought that this person was a representative from gitcoin so like a, a a trusted org that they um knew and it was actually um an impersonator and um and this is when they were cl uh, cl 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 uh cl collecting a po-op so um this is a also an example of just having uh, different wallets for different purposes. Um, for me, like I, I have a wallet that is just for po apps. Like I don't have any money in there, nothing. Um, and by doing that, it's like I protect myself. Um, from from my wallets being drained. And um and as people talked about in the the chat when um uh, when asking for help on a public forum there are plenty of impersonators that are gonna say oh I'm from the graph oh I'm from E N S like I I can help you and it's like actually they're not like I think it's really in, important for for people to understand that this is like. Like this is like a full time job for in purse impersonators and fishers. Like this is how they spend their days. Nine to five is just trying to steal f um funds from uh from people. 
So this is like an 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 example of like a very sophisticated impersonator where like this impersonator knew knew how to code like they knew javascript so like these are super smart people on the other end of the computer from us and then here are some examples of recent hacks that um that happened um this year um we had some pretty um famous accounts being hacked on twitter like the talek's um account his twitter account was ha was hacked through like um i believe the hackers like they somehow got his phone number and then asked his telephone company for a new sim card of his phone number because they he like lost it and then they were a they were able to hack his twitter account and on his tw on his twitter account um they posted a phishing link um that drained um almost seven hundred thousand dollars from people who clicked on this uh this this phishing link um and so this is where it's like you need to check those those links and like really ask yourself and like would this twitter account be offering this like free po-op or this free token like is this really um like on 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 brand for this person um and then uh there were also recent um hacks on twitter for gitcoin and ens as as well so this is where you just really pay attention to like what's happening on crypto twitter because after these hacks ha happen like so many other accounts were saying don't interact with Vitalik's account because it's been hacked or don't in interact with Gitcoin's account because it's been hacked. Um, so I think whenever I'm in these situations, it's like, do I have to click on this, this, this link like right now? Like, can this wait, you know, can this wait a day? And if it can, then, then you can kind of do more research and really, verify if this is a a verified link or a or a phishing scam and again another reminder is always always verify um there was a recent hack with um ledger like two weeks ago on on December 14th um around how their their like front end had been hacked so um on crypto twitter uh there were plenty of people saying don't interact with ledger now um and to like wait 24 hours so just do your research and here's our summary. I'm going to pass it back to Frischel. Thank you. So here's the summary of the everything that we've discussed so far on best practices. So first, avoid interacting random messages. Beware of phishing links. Avoid clicking any malicious links. Use advertisement blocker extensions or browsers. Uh, beware of impersonation, customer support, or community support. Verify official websites, usernames, and accounts. Avoid using Google to search for a website. Or check the URLs before you click or connect your wallet. And never give your private keys and secret recovery phrase to anyone except when backing it up. And... Um, offline backups. Don't store your seed phrase or private key online. Give someone you trust a cop copy of your backups. Review and verify transactions before signing. Cold wallet for storing large amounts of 
crypto and use ZK Bob for private transfers and remove your permissions using Revoke Cash. Have different wallets for different purposes and don't go too much on encryption. And we will share the slides, the link to the slides, so you could access the reading materials here on tips and best practices on how to protect your wallet and your funds. Okay, now we're down to the questions part or discussion. Yeah, um, and if you um, want to write your questions in the chat, we can also take them there. Um, otherwise, if you go into the reactions um, tab, then you can click it and you can raise your hand. Oh. Any questions for from anyone? Is account abstraction safe? Um, well, I'm I'm not an an account abstraction uh expert, but um, is there anyone who understands account abstraction more than me in this call that could ex ex explain it? Um, I see. Mitch in this call, maybe if Mitch could explain account abstraction and how that's helpful for security. Mm, nope, I'm not ready for that question. <laughs> All right. Um, well, uh, I can definitely do some research on account abstraction um, and post it and, and see how, how that helps for security. Um, should different wallets be on different platforms like, like MetaMask, Trust Wallet, ex, et cetera, or could it be several wallets in one Trust Wallet? Um, and Ramin also wants to speak, yeah. Um, so, and Ashley just posted a link on account abstraction. Um, so, uh, uh, um, again, like, um, I'm not an, 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 an expert. Um, for me, um, I just use my different accounts in, in that same wallet and label them differently. Um, I think if, if you are really into security, then using different wallets and different platforms, um, could be safer because you aren't sharing the same private key for all of those wallets. Um, and then Rami. Um, I can't hear you yet. Um, still can't hear you. I um see your mouth moving, but that's all. And we posted the um, link to the slides in the chat. All right. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, I had a problem with my microphone. Uh, uh, I wanted to add something to the uh, slide. I think uh, you mentioned it also. Uh, be careful with installing applications both on Mac and Windows. Uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, my, my wallet, uh, uh, as you know, my wallet uh, private key 
uh, was compromised. Uh, and uh, I'm pretty sure that it was because of a game, a victory game that I installed. Uh, I'm using Windows, I installed it on Windows. And uh, after I installed it, uh, after two hours, the Windows Defender or the antivirus found it. And it was too late. You know, so uh, please uh, be careful. Do not install anything that you don't know. Just someone messaged me on Telegram. Uh, it was David Parrot or something, I don't know. Uh, and told me that, hey, this is a victory game. You can make money. It was the cozy war. It's the name of the game. But do not search it. <laughs> it's dangerous. Uh, do, not search the, do not search the game and do not uh, open the website. Uh, because uh, and, uh, I downloaded and but it has a bad script and I don't know how, but somehow it hacked uh, the Google Chrome or MetaMask or something and uh, they they stole the private key somehow I don't know but just be careful do not install anything. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I think that's a. Uh a great example of just like being really um aware of different links that you are clicking on and just like a game you know it's like it's supposed to be fun but it's just um a camouflaged phishing attack so again go to like verified websites that are real um and yeah i mean e e even almond's been hacked twice like it's it's out there um so um there's a, a question from kotabe um are are at risk of of any self custodial wallet making a software update that can put funds at at risk and i would say ap uh, absolutely um we saw this happen with with ledger just a couple of of weeks ago um and i think this is an example of of choosing wallets and um both hardware and software that have been um verified and have had like billions and trillions of dollars of trans transactions go through them because those are going to be the safest um even with the example of of ledger um they are a very re reputable trusted wallet and they even got hacked but they still have the um the the knowledge to um to come to come that the hack and and then create a software um update to um to uh what's the word to uh discontinue the hack that's the word i could think of um and in the chat um yeah um atomic wallet also got hacked uh, so again, for me, like I just use wallets that have had tons of transactions and, f and, f and f funds go through them because they are generally more safe. Um, any other questions? No, I, I read through the notes and, you know, I was talking to Alman about this, uh, recently. Uh, and maybe I can just share like what I do with my wallets that like helps mitigate a lot of risk. Um, like same as Heather was saying, you, I use, you know, one wallet for most things. And then I have a cold wallet that has like large, like put your savings there on the cold wallet. Don't put your, your savings like on, on MetaMask or something like that. It's just better. But generally like, you have like your identity, right? And that's like your ENS address. That's a thing that you use to vote on stuff. That's like how people recognize, you know, your address. And then you have another one that maybe does like the, the DGEN or like the risky stuff that like clicks on things. And then you have another one that like you get paid with, you know? So like, 
you know, or your salary or your income, that's a totally separate thing from your identity and from things that you like use DeFi for. And then another thing on top of that is a good one to have a separate one that you interact with uh, centralized exchanges with. So if you're sending money to Kraken, if you're sending money to Binance, it's good just to keep those separate as well. If, if something happens in, in the country that you're, that you're in or whatever, at least you're, there's no direct link between your identity, your salary, or your DeFi that interacts with, with centralized exchanges. So um, that's just some tips for me that I think have, have worked out well. And none of these have large amounts of money on them. You know, maybe the DeFi one has like a little bit more, you know, maybe your main identity one has some gift tokens or voting tokens, whatever, but like don't store $30,000 worth of die, you know, on, on any of these. So, yeah. Um, and then what wallet do you recommend for holding Bitcoin? Uh, Ledger. Ledger. Yeah. Um, does anyone else have like a, um, comments around like best safety practices that, that they do? Uh, I think I have mentioned the name Keypass XC before. I think in other channel or the other channel, I can't remember very well. Uh, I will uh, post the link here. Uh, I, uh, I didn't use it before, but after my wallet was hacked, I'm uh, I'm using it. It's uh, for keeping your passwords, and uh, it's completely open source. Uh, and it's completely uh, safe. You can download it and you can, uh, because uh, as Mitch said, uh, the, one of the best practices is to have separate wallets, like for signing transactions, for uh, for the salaries, for uh, interacting uh, with the dApps, uh, and uh, managing different uh, wallets may be hard because you should keep the private keys somewhere safe and all the different wallets may have different passwords. Like you have one wallet in Brave, you have another wallet in Chrome and the other best practices is to have different passwords for everyone uh, for uh, for everyone, and not uh, like using the same password for all the <laughs> stuff you have. You, ha you should have different passwords. So this application helps you to have to save or like remember just one main password that is the key pass XC password you remember it and you can uh, safely uh, save all your password in it and the good thing is it's uh, completely offline it means that it's not connected to the internet and it's not cloud based or anything it's just like a local database it's just like a file just like uh, consider a spreadsheet uh, file just one file that you can save it, uh, and uh, that file has a password. And uh, what I use is that I use, uh, uh, and for the backup, uh, all my password, as in keypass XC, and keypass XC is just one file. And I keep, uh, for as a backup, I keep uh, that file in a cloud service, like in Google Drive, because uh, it's no problem. Uh, if your password is longer than I think uh, 16 is longer than 16 characters it has if it have it has a uh, numbers lowercase uppercase it would take more than 100 years uh, to break the code so it's safe you can uh, keep your uh, keep as XC file in the cloud storage you have like Google Drive or whatever that's what uh, that's how I use that. Well, thanks for that advice. Um, we have a question from Nikola in the chat. Um, in her MetaMask wallet, um, she can change between several 
accounts. Um, I wonder how safe this is. If one account got hacked, are the other one safe? And um, if I still use the same access login with this one wallet. Um, again, I'm not an expert, but um, I think this 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 really depends on how you are hacked. Um, if you um, sign a transaction for one account and then that drains that account, like I would never touch that account again. Like that that account is trash. Um, but if you are hacked because um a person got a hold of your seed phrase or private key, then that means that they can drain all the accounts that are attached to those to those pass passwords. Uh, right? Sort um, of almost. Okay. Um, if you click a bad transaction, that means they'll probably steal you know, a bunch of money and you have to go to like revoke.cash or something. And I don't know, but probably if, if they steal your money, just stop using that wall altogether. If they steal your seed phrase, you have to stop using that wall altogether. If they steal your, your seed, your, sorry, if they steal your private key, stop using that like address. If they steal your mnemonic seed phrase, then you're really screwed. That means they have everything because when you, load MetaMask onto a new computer, you put in your seed phrase and it's always the same and you always get all of your accounts back, right? So if somebody has that seed okay. phrase, then okay. all of your accounts are are vulnerable at that point. That's so, yeah, not true. Like... No? No, when you import it on an, onto a new computer or something like that, it will do the original wallet that you attach to it, but then you have to import each wallet individually with the private key. Mm, that hasn't been my experience. I've been able to really? get all my accounts back. Yeah. Just with one, with just using the seed phrase? Just using my seed phrase, I get all my accounts Because usually back. I just get my original account and then I have to add each one. That would be very bad if I didn't get all of my accounts back with my seed phrase. But I've done it like two or three times and it usually comes back, but I think it's a good practice to have those keys somewhere. I I think that at least in the in the case of MetaMask, like the other the subsequent accounts that you create are deterministic. So if you, as Mitch said, like uh, put all the all the words, the mnemonic phrase, uh, then if you said like create a new account, the same accounts that you had in the other in another computer and another device are going to be created. Uh, I just did this like a couple of weeks ago. And on the other hand, I know that you cannot really delete any specific account from MetaMask. Once you create a new public wallet, there's no option to delete it. So when it get when it gets hacked, I'm not sure. Like yeah, it's not the best, I guess. Thing. But yeah, there's no way to delete one address from your MetaMask account once you have created it. Do you know? Did you know? I'm not sure about that. Um, I haven't ever been ha hacked or fished, um, so I'm unsure. I'm I'm just saying this because I think I tried to research some time ago, and also consulting with Ashley, and we tried to figure out if there is a way to actually delete an account because I was just doing I was having all these test wallets, and yeah, that was pretty much the, the result was that there is no way to really delete it right i mean actually you can correct me if i'm wrong but this is my recollection i mean well for me whenever i uninstall metamask and reinstall it or like reformat my computer then it erases all those accounts and then i can choose which ones i want to add but i was i mean i i've never had the seed phrase bring up all my previous accounts before. That's how usually how I clear them from my MetaMask. Yeah, I mean, I think in theory, like you can't ever delete an account like it exists forever on on chain. 
but I, I would just like stop interacting with that account. And then if I, I would say like, depending on how you're feeling, then maybe just open a new wallet to take, um, extra pre pre caution. Um, does anyone else have any other questions or, or, or hot tips on how to stay safe? All right, I'm getting crickets, no more questions. Um, so yeah, um, be vigilant, stay safe, says Pepe, um, so yeah, if if you have any um questions, ask ask us. Um and then also in um the like private sections of our of our of our Discord channels is a safer place to ask questions as as well. <laughs>